AFTV Curtis, um, one nil. Yeah. Happy? Um, bored, tired. But do you know what it is? I'm tired about? Well, go, 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 go to bed. Well, uh, yeah, I will be going to bed later. I'm telling you. But no, do you know what it is? It's hard to get champagne football quickly. Do you know what I mean? Like he came into a squad that was a mess at the end of the day. Um, I think the issue is. You know, he needs the fullbacks. He needs he needs the two fullbacks in because you look today, Kalasinac and Chambers, they didn't get forward that much. Um, as for this big argument with Meza Ozil, I think obviously Emery's in his second season. The first season he looked at him, you know, wasn't playing him every week, but he played in enough games for him to look at him. He's come to the conclusion now he doesn't want him anymore. Not even on the bench, no, Curtis. But the thing is, not even on the bench. When you when you saying to yourself, boy, you know, suppose suppose mm. they would have equalised today. Yeah. Who's coming on to create anything? Mm. If they equalise, I yeah. mean, listen, I thought we were controlling the game, mm. but if they equalise, who's coming on to create anything? All right, let me ask you something. If you've, if you've got a 350 grand a week player, highest paid player in the club's history, he got two assists in the Premier League last year. Two. With Lacazette and Aubameyang. He's been at the club, what, five, six years? He's on the downward slope. I don't know why we're still clinging on to this. When he plays... It's not clinging on, but it was no, just but like, you're looking at him thinking, not even in the squad. No. No. So you support that? I support that. Because at the end of the day, that wage can go on better players. But he's still getting the wage. Yeah, but they need to shift him, don't they? If they if they play him and involve him, when it comes to January and they say, we want you out, he's going to go, why am I going? I'm comfortable. I'm involved. I'm not going nowhere. So you think he's you, bombing, it, bombing him out then? Look, it's common practice in football. You've got an expensive player that you want out the door. You've got to freeze him up. That's what United had to do with Sanchez this summer. That's what you've got to do. He's going to see out his contract if we're involving him. That's the reality. It's harsh, but that's what you have to do sometimes in football. And um, obviously, international break now. Mm. A couple of tough games after that. Yeah. I mean, Sheffield United away. That'll be mm. a tough mm. game. Mm. Got to get our way from. But you kind of... Night... Looking at the trajectory and moving on, you look at it and thinking, all right, things are improving every game. I mean, you know, if you play bad and win, people compliment you and say that's what good teams do. I think the problem is we're not playing well too often. Like, we're coming most weeks and going, boy, we got away with that. How often have we come here this year and said, yo, we dominated that game? In the Premiership anyway, maybe in the Cup games. But I just think... He's, he's worried too much about the opposition, how they play. Mm. You know, the first half I'm watching thinking, you know, we pressed them, we got a goal first 10 minutes. We could have finished Bournemouth off in the first half. Instead, we created a problem for ourselves in the second half. I know they didn't have many clear-cut chances, but even when Wilson went past Socrates, I thought, you know, it only takes one shot and we draw. But at the end of the day, you know, I suppose Tottenham drop points, City drop points. We've got no right to just hammer these teams. But... I don't know what the manager's plan is moving forward. I don't know what he's trying to do with this team. He's just turning up and we're just like, oh, you know, when's the goal going to come? But we're not controlling games. What, what's the plan? What's the system? Even Wenger, like at the end, he was, you know, he wasn't the best manager, but he had, he had a plan in place. You know what I mean? He, he still, give him, give him his due, he played good football. He probably neglected the defensive side a little bit. I, I'm watching this guy. We, 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 we won. We did win. We're third in the league. We did. Right. We, we, you're talking about struggling Belgium, yeah, but we won. We're mm. third in the league. We lost one game this season yeah. against a team that hasn't lost a game. I mean... All right, let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Remember last season, we had that 20-game unbeaten run mm. and a lot of us were happy about it. But deep down, we was going, mm, we're winging this a little bit. We're not like playing great football. And what happened in the end, it came crashing well, down. You've got to be patient. You've got to be oh, say to yourself, you know what I mean? He's getting it together. No? Rob, do you know, Rob, in a top level sport, you don't get a lot of time. Right? You've seen Chelsea, you've seen big clubs sack managers after one year. Realistically, what he did last season was potentially a sackable offence. The way he blew them last seven games. We only needed one win, right? So he blew last season, whatever you say. They backed him in the summer. He spent over 100 million, whether it was in, like in installments or whatever. He got over 100 million. Are we much better than we was last season? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs>